Kristen from Barefoot Theory here. So it's been a while since I've made one of these videos. We put 15,000 miles on my new Sprinter this summer. We drove from California all the way out to New York and I really had a chance to test out the electrical system in the van so I figured it was time to put one of these videos together talking about the solar and the batteries and the inverter and all the things that make the van run. Most of you guys may know I had a, uh, my first Sprinter was a 144 inch wheelbase. In that Sprinter I had a 375 amp hour battery bank and I had 180 watts of solar on my roof. I have a whole video about it and a blog post on my website, which um, I encourage you to read. It's good to get the comparison so you can kind of see how that system works versus my new system. In my first van, I had, uh, like I said, 180 watts of solar, which was great for weekending and it was great for uh, summer when there was a lot of sun out, but for living in full time, I wanted a more robust system in order to power my job as a blogger. I have a lot of camera equipment and computer, computer equipment. Uh, we also have uh, pedal assist electric bikes that have to be uh, charged. I have an induction stove, which I didn't have in my first van, and that's probably the biggest uh, source of energy consumption. But in the winter, when it was either cloudy or we're li we've been living in the van full time, I really wanted a beefier, more robust system in my new van. So when you're planning your Sprinter van conversion, the first thing you wanna do is make a list of all the electronics you wanna power in the van, like I just did, and you wanna calculate the amperage that each device draws. So you can go online or into your user manuals and usually find out uh, pretty easily what those devices are rated at and then you want to round up so it's always better to overestimate your needs than to underestimate your needs so once you have a liberal estimate of how much energy you're going to need you're going to be drawing on your system that will inform the size of the battery bank you need which i'll go into in a minute but first before you do that you need to decide what kind of batteries you want and there's two major options there's AGM batteries and there's lithium batteries. This van, I decided to go with AGM. They are a little bit heavier and they have a larger footprint than lithium, but they are cheaper and they do perform better in the cold. So since I spend my winters in Salt Lake City, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to run the heat in my van 24 seven just to protect the batteries if it got really cold outside. So in the end, I decided that I really wanted a very robust battery bank. I never wanted to have to plug in. I never wanted to worry about plugging in, especially in the winter when it's cold and maybe you're not getting a ton of solar on your solar panels. And so I decided to go with the 660 amp hour battery bank, which is located in the garage um, underneath my bed in a big cabinet. The 660 amp hour battery bank probably sounds like a lot, especially compared to, it's like nearly double what I had in my last van. Uh, but my goal was I never wanted to have to plug in. I never wanted to worry about running low on my batteries. I never wanted to have to not be able to charge my cameras or my computer or run the lights because of a low battery. So I, I really sized up and so far this summer, uh, we haven't had to plug in once. We even spent time out in New York where it was rainy, still didn't have to plug in. And my meter, which is right up there, never really dropped below like 12.4, which is about 75% full. The batteries in my van are made by a company called North Star Batteries. Got them at the recommendation of Outside Van, who built out my van. And there's one other thing I wanna mention about mounting locations. You really need to think about where, when you're gonna put your batteries somewhere, you wanna make sure they're secure. So your battery bank is really heavy, and if you get in an accident, you need to make sure that it's in a secure place, that it's not gonna come flying forward if you get in an accident. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're determining where you're gonna mount your batteries. Now you figured out how big you want your batteries, what kind of batteries you want. Now you have to figure out how you're going to charge them. So there's three main ways you can charge your batteries. The first is shore power. So I do have a shore power hookup. Like I said, I've never had to use it, um, but I do have one just in case. And it's never a bad idea to top off your batteries here and there, uh, just so they're 100% full. The second way is through solar panels. I have 445 watts of solar made by Zamp Solar, which is a company based in Bend, Oregon. I'll talk a little bit more about their panels in a minute. And the third way you can charge uh, your batteries is by hooking them up to your engine alternator. So I chose to do that and that means that 
whenever I'm driving, the batteries are constantly charging uh, all the time. So as long as the engine is on, the batteries are charging. Now they have a, a basically it's, it's a separator. I'm not a mechanic, so I won't try to explain this in too much detail, but basically uh, it prioritizes uh, charging your car battery first. And as long as your car battery is charged, then it sends uh, power to the batteries that run everything else in the van. So now about my solar system. So like I said, they're made by Zamp Solar, which is a Bend, Oregon based company. All their panels are made right there in house by American workers. They have great customer support, great quality control. All of their panels are tested thoroughly before you uh, buy them. And so um, that's why I wanted to go with them just because the quality control and the customer support if I was to ever have any problems like I know I'm going to be able to get help from them versus some company that's over in China. And also to speak to the durability uh, this summer we were in Lake Tahoe and got caught in like a really gnarly hailstorm. I think some of you may have seen it on my Instagram stories but the hail was coming down in like balls like golf ball sized hail and a lot of you guys were messaging me like oh my gosh like are your solar panels dented well sure enough i went up there um and they were fine there weren't wasn't a single dent or anything in any of the panels so they really can withstand uh, a beating Zamp solar panels also come as part of a kit so they come with a controller that's inside one of my cabinets which allows you to read exactly how much uh, energy is coming in from the sun at any given time. So that's a handy way of tracking how much, uh, how powerful the sun is and how much energy you're bringing in through your panels. And finally, <laughs> and maybe most importantly, is they make a 80 watt panel that's long and skinny and it can fit right on the side of your fan. So you can have two 80 watt panels, one on each side of your fan if it's centered in the middle of your van. So you can really maximize the, the space on your roof while still maintaining a walkway down the center of your van. One other exciting thing to mention is I'm gonna be giving away uh, one of Zamp's 80 watt solar panel kits uh, to one of you who's building out your van. So make sure to go over to my Instagram page. It's at Sprinter Camper Vans. Uh, and that's where I'll, I'll be running the giveaway. So just look for a picture of my setup on my van and you can enter to win there. The final piece of your electrical system is your inverter. What an inverter does is it basically takes the DC power from your battery bank and cons converts it into AC power. So uh, that kind of power that comes out of your outlets and it's what allows you to charge your phone, your computer, to plug in, uh, to run my induction stove, which is actually plugged in um, and uses AC power. So I have a 2000 watt Magnum inverter. The wattage rating uh, that you need kind of depends on what types of devices you want to run in your van. <clears throat> if you want to have an induction stove, I will say that that does suck quite a bit of power. My battery bank is big enough to handle it and my solar is enough to replenish the power that it consumes, but <clears throat> you do need a high energy or high output inverter in order to run something like an induction stove or a microwave or a blender or power tools or anything that like really consumes a lot at once in short bursts of energy, you need a powerful inverter to handle that. The rating for your inverter also determines how much or how many different devices you can plug in at once. So if you don't have a powerful inverter, you're not gonna wanna charge a computer and run your induction stove at the same time. You'll have to choose one or the other depending on uh, your inverter's rating. If you are going for a more simple build, like you're not gonna have an induction stove or a microwave or have any of those super high draw appliances in your van, you can get away with the less expensive inverter, something in the six to 1200 watt range. And the final thing to pay attention to when looking for an inverter is there's two kinds. There's a modified scene inverter and a pure scene inverter. So mine is a pure scene, I think maybe it's sign. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if it's sign or scene or how you pronounce it, but e either way, there's modified and there's pure. And modified is not as uh, efficient. They are less expensive, but they're not gonna be able to run things like a induction stove or microwave. So if you want an induction stove or microwave, you need to make sure you look for a pure, scene sign inverter and that you have a high wattage rating on your inverter the inverter in my van is also located in the back under the bed in the uh, battery bank cabinet so it's all self-contained in that one box in the garage so that pretty much wraps up the electrical planning process in your sprinter van except you still need to figure out where you're going to put your outlets so um, in this van i have four normal plugs we have uh, two up front on this side of the stove and i have two 
two uh, back here, which is the ones I use the most because it's right next to my desk and that's where I'm charging my computer and all my work devices. Um, and then we each have two USBs on each side of the bed. So we're, we can each, I can charge my phone on one side, Ryan can charge his phone on the other side, and we don't have to swap cords or anything like that. We can just leave those cords plugged in all the time so they're there every night when we go to bed. And I forgot two more. Uh, we have two plugs in the garage under the bed uh, that we use to plug in our pedal assist bikes. So I hope you found this video helpful in terms of planning your own electrical system and your spinner van. Uh, for more information, you can go to the van life section on my website, which is barefittheory.com. Um, you'll find information on my current van as well as my old van, so you can kind of compare and see what might work for you. Um, I'm also happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, I have more videos coming about the van, so I appreciate your patience this summer. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure to follow me over on Instagram at Barefoot Theory. And thanks, and I'll see you soon.